The Intel Raptor Lake already has a good lead in productivity over the Ryzen 7000 when we talk about the mid-range CPUs. This is most likely because the fact that Intel chips come with more cores, particularly the efficient cores that help distribute the tasks. With the Raptor Lake refresh, what else Intel could do to improve the performance significantly without having to design the die from scratch? This is where things get interesting because from the various specifications leaks we have seen so far, it doesn't look like Intel is giving each and every processor a core count increase and all we are left with is an increased clock speed and apparently nothing else. If we talk about the specifications, only the Core i7 processors are getting a core count increase and it's the increment in the efficient cores rather than on the performance cores which will be now 12 on the refresh compared to the 8 on the original. Core i5s and i9s remain unchanged except for the clock speeds which are speculated to be increased by 200 MHz and that's it. But there is still hope for this series if we consider the latest performance leak of the Core i5-14600K which recently was spotted on Twitter confirming the clock speed increase and also Geekbench score which shows us its true performance. As spotted by Harukaze, it was the Core i5-14600KF which is the CPU without any integrated graphics. It scored 2794 points in single core and 17190 points in multi-core tests. Now if we compare it to the scores achieved by the 13600K, the 14600K looks disappointing with only 5.5% uplift in single core performance. To me, this shows that the 14 600K won't be any better for gaming or even for some applications like Adobe Photoshop or Premiere Pro because games and these applications are mostly dependent on higher single core power considering that the CPU is already having enough cores to support the applications. But on the other hand when we look at the multi-core performance, the 14600K has greatly improved with a 17% performance uplift which is not only decent for a refresh CPU but also raises some questions. Considering that the 14600K doesn't come with any core count increase, it is not possible to have such a big gap in multi-core performance unless all the cores run at higher clock speeds than before. The 14600K is only 200 MHz faster than the 13600K when it comes to max turbo frequency and therefore I believe that unlike the latter, the 14600K should be able to boost up the clock speeds of all the cores instead of a single one. This means that Intel must have found out a way to remove this bottleneck from all the cores and now even without any core count increase, it can deliver much higher productivity. That said, this improvement is likely to be seen on the other refresh core processors, especially the i7s which not only have higher clock speeds but also more efficient cores. But I don't think that refresh lineup will have any significant improvement in gaming which won't attract gamers, unlike the Ryzen 3D CPUs that can do a better job while consuming far less power. At this point in time, AMD is doing pretty well in the CPU market and even the number one seller on Amazon is 5600X which now consistently remains below $150. The only most selling Intel CPU is the higher end i9-3900K which is popular popular due to its productivity and it's most likely that gamers are going for AMD CPUs like the 7800X 3D and the 5800X 3D as they are far cheaper than the 13900K and still deliver exceptional performance. Therefore, it looks to me that gamers want more affordable mid-range options than the higher end chips because spending a few hundred dollars more won't affect the gaming performance. Now moving on to the graphics cards, we have the first ever glimpse of a new Radeon GPU based on the RDNA 3 architecture. It is the Radeon RX 7700 XT that will follow the release of the 7800 XT. The latter was already seen a couple of times in the last week where we not only got its official specs but also the die AMD is going to use in this GPU. The 7700 XT was seen on the EEC website where it was registered by ASRock and we can see as many as 3 GPU variants. It is clear from the model names that the rumored memory size is indeed 12 gigabytes, which means that the 7700 XT will be based on a 192 bit memory bus. As for the die, currently we don't have any information on it, but it is speculated that it is going to use a cut down Navi 32 GPU. Both the 7700 XT and 7800 XT are planned to launch the next month, and we have to wait and see how both GPUs will perform against the higher end cards from the same family and their Nvidia counterparts. Right now, it doesn't look like these GPUs will bring any good benefits over the last gen, but pricing is the key. If AMD launches the 70 XT for over $500, I don't think it will be much appealing to gamers. As for the 7700 XT, it should be priced somewhere around $400 and should at least compete with the RX 6800. The RX 6800 currently costs around $450 and if AMD wants to sell the 7700 XT, it must price it lower than that. As for the 7800 XT, I'm still not positive if it will change anything for AMD as it is hardly going to surpass the 6800 XT and will cost more than $500. If you want to know more about how it will 
will stand against it, then watch this video where I compare it against the 6800 XT and the 7900 GRE. Also let me know what you think about Intel Raptor Lake refresh benchmarks and if you think Intel can make a good comeback with it. Lastly hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to turn on the notifications to never miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one.